As we have often seen, one of the main scenarios where great advances in scientific and technological matters occur is undoubtedly war. Although it may seem ironic, the need for nations to consolidate their superiority leads them to develop new feats in various fields, such as transportation. Therefore, today we will analyze the history of a project developed during the Cold War, which aimed to develop mobile intercontinental missiles. Stay with us and discover the story of the transporter and placer, the mining truck turned into an ultra-powerful weapon. One of the most significant confrontations of the past century is undoubtedly the famous Cold War. Despite being a conflict where the involvement of both nations, the emerging superpower United States and then established Soviet Union was not intended to be completely direct. Its outcome was reflected in the great political, scientific, technological, and especially armament advancements developed during that era. In this period, which spans from the end of World War II to the early 1990s, the confrontations were not armed. Instead, the two superpowers engaged in a sort of ego competition, where each aspired to be superior to its rival in ideological, economic, and geopolitical spheres. Although initially everything seemed to be resolved within sporting, scientific, and technological situations, the tension escalated rapidly, causing both countries to increase their military might excessively. This was driven by the constant need of each country to flex its muscles and demonstrate power in front of its opponent. Giving a new direction to the struggle that ultimately focused on the development of nuclear weapons and long-range missiles. These latter two technologies were key to the development of new vehicles mainly because the US government believed in the necessity of having a fleet of weapons capable of being deployed quickly and safely. The outlook for the United States was promising at the start of the 1970s, as the US Air Force had a strong intercontinental ballistic missile development program. However, the government's ideals demanded that these weapons be deployed from any part of the country in the event of a large-scale military conflict, making it essential to create a specialized vehicle to ensure their transport and subsequent use. It should be noted that the specifications and dimensions of the missiles at that time were quite colossal. To put it into perspective, the solid fuel LGM-30 Minuteman missile developed in the 1960s weighs 32 tons, is 18 meters long, and has a diameter of nearly 2 meters. Similarly, the LGM-118A Peacekeeper missile developed in the 1980s had a staggering weight of almost 90 tons, a length of 21.8 meters, and a diameter of 2.3 meters. Although the task of developing a vehicle with enough power and rigidity to transport one of these heavy missiles seems like a significant challenge for any engineer and designer at the time, the government knew exactly who could accomplish this feat. The creation of this special equipment was entrusted to the company T-Rex, a decision that was far from random given the company's extensive experience and reputation in developing specialized equipment and large capacity mining dump trucks. To simplify the task and at the same time ensure a solid and reliable base platform, T-Rex engineers decided to use an existing vehicle and make only essential modifications. Thus starting with a T-Rex 3311C mining truck, the new transporter began to take shape. This unit already boasted a payload capacity of nearly 75 tons and dimensions of 10 meters in length, 4.7 meters in width, and 4.8 meters in height. Now named T-Rex MX, these trucks featured adaptations such as the integration of two extra axles to achieve an 8x8 configuration, as well as the replacement of many essential electrical and mechanical systems. Additionally, they were equipped with a new Detroit V16 diesel engine capable of generating a thousand horsepower. Despite these convincing features, the excessive weight of the missiles, which seemed to increase with each new launch, necessitated the use of two vehicles simultaneously. This not only gave it its distinctive and peculiar appearance, but also resulted in incredible dimensions, 50 meters in length, 6.6 .6 meters in width, and 9 meters in height, with a total weight of 660 tons. Interestingly, with each truck positioned at one end, the unit could move in both directions, greatly benefiting its mobility by allowing it to perform emergency maneuvers without the need to turn, thus avoiding potential complications. 
If you've reached this point in the video and enjoyed it, we would greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. Now named Transporter and Placer, the unit began its testing phase in 1980, successfully meeting the initial expectations for the project. Despite this, the T-Rex MX 8x8 trucks never entered mass production, but unfortunately the reason for this was not related to their performance or the project's cost, but rather purely political issues. Just one month later, in 1981, the United States government decided to halt the development of this mobile intercontinental ballistic missile program with the new change in precedency. The possibility of storing the missiles in silos was analyzed, centralizing and better controlling the military power. This decision almost immediately ended the promising achievements made so far, culminating in the termination of the transporter and placer project once and for all. At the time of cancellation, only a couple of T-Rex MX prototypes had been built, the same ones used during the tests. With no clear purpose for their existence, the government decided to auction off both units to partially recover the money invested in them. However, no one seemed to find any real use for the units, not even as heavy transport equipment. So years later, at the end of the 20th century, they were scrapped and sold for parts. Tell us, what do you think of this story? Do you think the T-Rex MX could find a purpose today? What other stories of iconic trucks do you know? We'll be reading your comments. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it and want more similar content, please subscribe to our channel. We also invite you to visit our secondary channel, Gear Unlimited, where you'll find a wide variety of topics. We appreciate your support and interest. Keep on trucking and stay tuned for more.